we have something called the chain of infection. It's got six links. And in that chain of infection, all of those links must be completed for an infection to take hold. So at each of those different links, we can do things to break that chain of infection. Okay, so if you look at the top, we'll start from the top, we're looking at the causative agent or the pathogenic organism. So that's your germ. In COVID-19, that's your virus. So that's your causative agent. The only way we can stop that causative agent at present is with a vaccine. We don't have it, we're waiting for it, but that would be how we would stop this agent in the first place. We then move around that chain of infection and we have the reservoir or source. So where does that, um, where is that virus living basically? Well, in the case of COVID-19, it's in humans um, and mainly it's spread through droplets from coughs, et cetera, sneezes. The other um, source or reservoir for infection with COVID-19 is dirty surfaces, so contaminated surfaces. So that's, that's something to be really aware of. That's what we call indirect contact, okay? The ways that we can stop at this stage, the reservoir and source, is that um, you keep two meters away from people. So it's our social distancing. We make sure that we're not in um, regular close contact with the individuals. And if we have to be, we should be wearing the appropriate PPE and we should absolutely minimize the time that we spend um, in close contact with people, even with PPE on. As regards the dirty and contaminated surfaces, regular cleaning. Um, if, it, if it's with a person with COVID-19, it would be cleaning with a detergent and a disinfectant to make sure that it's killed the virus. Okay. Moving around the chain of infection here, we've got how does the virus get out of the body? Well, in the case of COVID-19, you'll have heard of, or possibly heard of something called respiratory etiquette. So basically, when you cough, you should have a tissue or you sneeze, you should have a tissue, a disposable one. You should cough or sneeze into that, catch it, you then bin it and you kill it by washing your hands. Okay, you wash your hands directly afterwards. If you haven't got a tissue, you cough or sneeze into the crook of your elbow. Okay, the reason being the crook of your elbow, you're not going to be using that to contaminate other surfaces as readily as you would with your hands, etc. Um, the other way that the virus can get out of the human's body is through splatters of body fluid. It could be urine, it could be blood. So if, if at any time you felt that your face mask, um, fluid resistant face mask wasn't going to be enough, you would wear a visor, a full face visor as well. And that's what prevents you from the splatters of body fluid. Okay. The other thing, the other way out of the body is what we call aerosols. So you'll have heard of aerosol gener generating procedures. Um, for a long time, I think they may have just opened up, dentists have just opened up again to doing procedures. But during that time, because things like drilling, um, and the high pressure water sprays, et cetera, they were generating what we call aerosols, which is a finer mist than a droplet. Um, that is where, if you were involved in any form of aerosol generating procedure, you would have to wear a respiratory mask and it needs to be specially fitted. So you would know very well, everyone should have a respiratory mask properly fitted if you're involved in aerosol generating procedures. When it comes to the mode of transmission or the method of spread with COVID-19, it is the main forms of spread are either through direct or indirect contact. So direct contact would be um, within two meters of a, a person who has COVID-19, um, whether you have your PPE on or not. So if, if you were in the street in the normal everyday setting, and you didn't know somebody you were passing in the street with, had COVID-19 and you were, or, or you were in a shop with them for a long period of time, you, you could catch COVID-19 ultimately. So it's about the social distancing. It's about wearing, when you're out and about shopping, wearing your face coverings um, in enclosed areas, on buses, on transport, etc. The other way is through the, di uh, the indirect contact 
which is touching contaminated surfaces. Because we know that certainly on hard surfaces that um, the virus will can last for up to 72 hours and thereafter will reduce in efficacy. So we, we do know that it does last on hard surfaces. One of the most important points at this time is that we wear our personal protective equipment and that we make sure we're doing really thorough cleaning. We're cleaning well-used surfaces. If you're working with people with COVID-19, that you would be cleaning their environment at least twice a day, fully cleaned with um, detergents and disinfectant, disinfectants. But also more often cleaning well-used surfaces such as door handles, remote controls, mobile phones they may be using, um, light switches is another one. You should be regular, because lots of people will touch a light switch, for example. So well-used surfaces should be cleaned more regularly. Um, when you look at the portal of entry into the body, how, how does that virus directly get into our bodies? Well, we might inhale it, we might touch a contaminated surface. You'll have heard of them saying that we should not touch our face um, at all. We should try and avoid touching our face at all. Similarly, if you're wearing a mask, you shouldn't be playing with that mask. Consider the mask to be contaminated. If you touch the outside of that mask, you're potentially contaminating your hands. If you're not wearing a mask and you're touching your face and you've been holding, opening doors and they've not been properly cleaned, then you have the chance that you could be transferring that virus through your mucosal membranes, basically through your rubbing your eyes or putting your fingers towards your mouth or rubbing your nose. You could be transferring that infection that way. So try and avoid touching your face. Um, keep your two meter distancing, wear appropriate PPE at the appropriate times um, and hand hygiene. Can't stress enough the hand hygiene. If you, even if you, touch the contaminated surface before you touch your face for example if you if you're constantly washing your hands much more than you regularly would or using alcohol hand gel and rub i am going to be showing you a picture of the correct way to wash your um a video of the correct way to wash your hands um and, and what you should be doing and thinking about when you're doing that we look at people at risk as well that's the sixth part of our chain of infection is the person who are, who's most at risk? Well, in the case of COVID-19, people with a reduced immune system, so it might be people undergoing cancer treatment, um, people who have had a transplant. You've also got people who are um, chronic and acute um, asthmatics, people who suffer from diabetes, um, the elderly, people over the age of 70, the very young are always at risk. Um, and generally anyone who has an underlying health condition. These are the people most at risk and these are the people we need to protect. Um, so wearing your face mask in public is protecting a person who might be more vulnerable than yourself. Okay, If we all do it, we're all protecting each other. So that, that's the kind of thing you need to think about. So remember that the chain of infection starts with your causative agent, which is your virus, COVID-19. The reservoir is the humans or um, dirty surfaces. The means of exit is through droplets, coughing, sneezing, etc. Being up close and personal with people for prolonged periods of time. The mode of transmission um, is predominantly direct or indirect contact. So being close with people, touching dirty surfaces and then transmitting. The portal of entry would be through the mucosal membranes, through the mouth, the nose, the eyes. Um, hence why if you think that there may be body fluid splashes, you would wear your full face visor to stop any splashes into your eyes, etc. And the people most at risk over 70 and people with underlying health conditions, etc. Okay.